Isaiah chapter 42, starting at verse 1. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his law, the islands will put their hope. This is what God the, the Lord says. He who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to his people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. The New Testament lesson comes from Acts chapter 10, 34 through 38, page 779 in the Pew Bible. Acts chapter 10, starting at verse 34. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling good news of peace through Jesus Christ to his Lord of all. You know what has happened through Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. Will you please rise for the reading of the, the gospel lesson? Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, page 682 in the Pew Bible. Matthew chapter 3, starting at verse, seven, verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the, to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. You may be seated. This ends the reading of the Gospel. Jesus came to John to be baptized. And then John did the thing that any sane person would do. He questioned that he should do that. He thought that Jesus should baptize him instead of the other way around. John was right. He and everyone else who ever lived and ever will live needs really to be baptized by Jesus. We need the spiritual washing the cleansing from sin that only Jesus can do. We are the ones who need the empowerment of the only Holy Spirit that only Jesus can give. For without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit whom Jesus gives, no one can produce good fruit in their lives. We just can't be good people without God in our hearts, and Jesus is the one who puts him there. And yes, we all need to be baptized by Jesus. But Jesus insisted, and he said, let it be so for now in order to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, that's the right thing to do. Well, why is that? Why was it right for John to baptize Jesus or for Jesus to be baptized at all? There are several very good reasons. First of all, 
Jesus began at that time taking the sin of the world upon himself. And you might think, well, I thought he did that on the cross. And it's true, he did. But Matthew 8, verse 17, 16 and 17 says this, When evening came, this is when he was up in Capernaum ministering, many came who were demon-possessed, uh, and he drove out the spirits with the word and healed the sick. This was to fill, fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and he carried our diseases. And so by healing people, Jesus was somehow bearing our sins and diseases upon himself already. And so by identifying with us in his baptism, Jesus began that work of bearing and taking away our sins. Secondly, he made himself one with us in baptism. Well, surely he was f fully human already. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He was a real human baby boy. But listen to these scriptures from the Old Testament just by way of example. In Ezra chapter 9, Ezra was one of those who came back uh, from Babylon and Persia at that time and helped the, helped the Israelites, the uh, returning exiles, to establish their nation and their temple and their worship again. And Ezra led them in a prayer. And this is part of what he said. I rose from my self-abasement with my tunic and cloak torn and fell on my knees with my hands spread out to the Lord my God and prayed, O oh my God, I am too ashamed and disgraced to lift up my face to you, my God, because our sins are higher than our heads and our guilt has reached to the heavens. From the days of our forefathers until now, our guilt has been great. Because of our sins, we... And our kings and our priests have been subjected to the sword in captivity, to pillage and humiliation at the hands of foreign kings, as it is today. And that's how he began his prayer. Likewise, Daniel, when he was a captive in Babylon uh, during the exile, he also prayed, and this is what he said, O Lord, great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with all who love him and obey his commands, we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Now, Ezra and Daniel, they didn't commit those sins that they were confessing. But in their prayers, they identified with the rest of the Israelites who did commit those sins. And by doing that, they could plead God's forgiveness for their entire nation. And in the same way, by being baptized, Jesus identified himself, himself with us according to our need. He became one of us in his soul, at, at least. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, Since the children have flesh and blood, he, that is Christ, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like his brothers in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Jesus became fully one of, one of us uh, in his baptism. Thirdly, as Jesus said, point blank, he needed to fulfill all righteousness. It was just simply the right thing to do. Jesus always practiced what he preached. You know, and that's one of the big criticisms that uh, non-believers have against Christianity or churches is that, oh, there's a bunch of hypocrites there. Of course, uh, Christians and churchgoers don't have a corner on that market, but that's a subject for another day. Uh, but the Lord gave the command, for instance, just given an example, to keep the Sabbath holy. That's one of the Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And Jesus uh, withheld, or not withheld, He up, upheld the commandments. He said in the Sermon on the Mount, 
Do not think I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. He came to obey them perfectly, to make them come true, to show us what keeping the commandments looked like. So Jesus practiced doing the commandments. And in the case of the Sabbath day, uh, Luke 4.16 says this, He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He didn't just talk about keeping the Sabbath, he did it. He went to church every week, in other words. It was the right thing to do. And so that is a command we also have as disciples. As believers, we're commanded to make disciples of all nations. And part of what we do in making disciples is to baptize people. And of course, we have the command or at least the invitation to ourselves, repent and be baptized. That's what we're supposed to do. And so Jesus didn't just talk about it. He gave the example. He himself was baptized. And so following his example, those who believe in him are baptized also. Fourthly, Jesus went to be baptized in order to be recognized as the Messiah. Now, a lot of times Jesus told people, don't tell anybody, as if people would notice if you were a leper and suddenly were clean, you were blind, and now you could see. Your daughter was dead, but now she's alive. People told anyway. But he didn't want people to get the wrong idea about who the Messiah was. But he didn't want it to be a secret either. He wanted people to know who he was and why he came. I mean, after all, God sent John the Baptist as the forerunner of the Messiah. Very clearly stated in the Old Testament, and Jesus himself referred to him as such. The Messiah had long been predicted to come. People were looking for him. And Jesus later told people in many ways by God, that he was God's son, by his words and by his actions. It wasn't to be a secret that he was here, that he was the Messiah. At Jesus' baptism, God the Father said out loud, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Now, we're not really clear the way the Bible's worded. If everybody that was there that day heard God's voice, or if just Jesus and John the Baptist. But we are, the Bible is clear that John the Baptist and Jesus both heard the voice of God saying, This is my beloved Son. And so John clearly testified who Jesus was. In John's Gospel, we have these words. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant. When I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen, and I testify, this is the Son of God. So, you know, just over and over again, John testifies, this is the Messiah. This is God's chosen one. I heard the voice. According to Scriptures, the testimony of two witnesses establishes a fact. And there was Jesus who testified to who he was, and there was John the Baptist. But in John chapter 5, Jesus says there really were five witnesses as to who he was. Himself, John the Baptist, the Father who spoke, the works that Jesus did, and the Scriptures themselves, the Holy Bible. And so by his baptism, Jesus showed himself to be the long-awaited Messiah. Fifthly, Jesus was baptized because he needed the anointing of the Holy Spirit to begin and to accomplish his ministry. It's not that the Holy Spirit wasn't with him. He was. But the Holy Spirit was sent to equip Christ 
for His great work of salvation just the same way He's sent to equip us for what God calls us to do. The Holy Spirit is shown throughout the Bible as coming on a person in power to accomplish whatever it is God has called that person to do. It was true with Gideon and Samson and others in the Old Testament. It's true with Peter and John in the New Testament and with everybody else. Isaiah 61 verse 1 says this about the Lord Messiah. In the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This was fulfilled at Jesus' baptism. It was time for Him to begin His public earthly ministry. And Jesus was baptized so that the Holy Spirit would come on Him and equip Him for this ministry. And finally, a sixth reason. Jesus was baptized as an ordination into that ministry. It was an ordination ceremony of sorts. We go back to Exodus 29 and Leviticus verse, uh, chapter 8. Aaron and his sons were ordained into the priesthood, and the Bible spells out just how to do that. Aaron was ordained as high priest and his sons as priests under him. And the ceremony went kind of like this. First, they were washed with water. And then they were clothed with fine linen garments. And then they were anointed with oil. And the washing with water obviously symbolizes baptism. The fine garments, righteousness or good deeds. And the oil symbolizes the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon that person. Jesus perfectly fulfilled this divine ordination as high priest. And by being baptized in the Jordan and commissioned by God the Father, Jesus was then ordained for ministry. Exodus 19, where the Israelites were camping at the foot of Mount Sinai right before God gave them the Ten Commandments. Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6 says this, The Lord said, Now if you fully obey me, and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. God called the whole nation of Israel to be priests. The Israelites under Moses were ordained to be God's priests. And although they were to destroy the wicked Canaanite nations, the ones who were presently living in the promised land, to all other peoples in the world, they were to be a witness to all nations of God's glory and His love so that they too could follow the Lord. Deuteronomy 4, the Lord says, Observe these commandments carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations who will hear about all these decrees and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Even Israel was meant to be the witness to the world. Going to the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 10 says the Israelites were baptized into Moses when they crossed the Red Sea. If that's true, then Israel was baptized into Joshua when they crossed the Jordan River into the Promised Land. And remember, Joshua is the same name as Jesus. It means the Lord saves. So then Jesus getting baptized in the Jordan River is like God promising to bring all those who believe to heaven through him. And that is exactly what Jesus promised. We're familiar with the verse in John's gospel. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. He's the way to heaven. He's the way to the Father. He's the way to eternal life. And so what does the Lord say of us? 1 Peter 2, verse 9 and 10. You are a chosen people, the royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. 
Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. We find out from Peter the Apostle, we have the same commission as Israel to be a holy nation, a royal priesthood. And so our baptism is our ordination into ministry as well. Peter said in Acts chapter 2 at the end of his sermon when the people were cut to the heart, the Bible says, and wanted to know what to do, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Just like Israel of old. Just like Aaron the high priest. Just like Jesus at the Jordan River. We too believe and then we are ordained for ministry by our baptism. We receive the Holy Spirit so we can be the Lord's witnesses. Even as Jesus' last recorded words on earth, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We receive the Holy Spirit so we can be His witnesses, His ambassadors, His priests. What does a priest do? I sum it up this way. A priest represents God to the people. And a priest represents the people to God. He's the mediator. He's the go-between. And he represents God to the people by teaching, by proclaiming the Scripture. He represents the people to God by prayer and intercession. And so we're not saved for our own benefit alone. We're not saved just so we can get to heaven as, as wonderful as that is. But in Christ, we too are the light of the world. We're to reflect His light to the dark world around us. We are to minister as priests in the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was baptized so that we would recognize Him as Messiah and Lord. So that we would follow His example. That as baptized believers, we would receive the power of the Holy Spirit to be His presence his priests in the world today. May we live up to our high calling in Jesus' name. Amen.